Halo and I make Age of Sigmar content. In the wake of recent news, I wrote something today, so let me read it to you. It's story time. The year is 20XX, Warhammer fantasy after years of decline from mismanagement has finally settled into a decade-long malaise of unpopularity, reportedly being outsold even by their paint pot line. It's finally time to throw in the towel on their, at this point, comatose fantasy game. Anyway, Top Brass had a hard choice to make. Kill the thing entirely, or try to salvage what they could and start fresh. They chose the latter, and Age of Sigmar was born. To put it diplomatically, it was a catastrophe. Four pages of Play-Doh and finger paint rules for children. No points. It was impossible to, I don't know, play a roughly fair game. Cringe rules like comparing mustache sizes in real life and shouting LARPer nonsense out loud at the table to get bonuses. Pile in for combat had you explicitly stacking bases on top of each other, scratching your basing material and paint during play. Measuring weapon ranges from the sword the guy on his mount was holding so it was out of reach and couldn't ever attack. Resolving any rules dispute, no matter how obvious, by rolling a d6 and whoever rolled higher was just right about the rule. Watertight. No room for exploitation there. This was Games Workshop at their most honest. I consider it a window into their true philosophical selves. This G.I. Joe's kindergarten making gunshot noises with your mouth paste-eating way of playing is how they truly, desperately wish their players would engage with their products. Utterly embarrassing. Staggeringly out of touch. In a way, it makes me sad for them. They just want their customers to buy the models and then eat spaghetti with their hands, smearing D6 tomato sauce across their face, with all the coordination of a toddler in a high chair learning how to swallow. Unsurprisingly, they were hit from both sides. The fantasy players rightly felt betrayed. Thousands of dollars and hours of work flushed down the toilet. Don't worry, chaps. Just use most, but not all, of your old models for our new Lincoln Logs game. Also rebase 200 models from square to circle bases. From the other end, New audiences were asked to come play this thing that could arguably not even rightly be called a proper game, as you couldn't even form roughly equal sides to play against each other. Players took it upon themselves to create points for every single war scroll in the game, to essentially complete the job that Games Workshop did not bother finishing themselves, and they did such a good job of it that GW stole those points wholesale for the first General's Handbook, which marks the anniversary of Age of Sigmar becoming a real game. And it was actually good, and it kept getting better and sold very well, but that's another story. During this time, the company had invented a phrase for marketing purposes, and it was only the faithful. This was the clarion call that their poster boys that tried and failed to emulate the success of Ultramarines, the Stormcast Eternals. That first wave of derpy, badly designed, fat, goofy-ass models with the awful gold with blue trim paint scheme that represented an investment in Age of Sigmar's future. Somewhat of a war bond you could buy in support of this new, wobbly IP. Many bought in, and in great numbers. I just got 3,000 points of Stormcast, only the faithful brothers, right? The next wave Extremist Chamber and the next Sarcosanct with the coming of 2nd edition. Today... Only two editions later, GW has announced Wave 1 and Sarcosanct will be retired. Some will get new versions, but most will not. Rules gone, armies gone. Thanks for being faithful. Eat shit. Buy the new wave. This is the thanks you get. On that note, bone splitters will also be flushed, but this time they're jiggling the handle. No replacements. Thanos snaps his fingers. Not surprising, to be honest. No support ever. Every edition and book, they would lose models, lose rules, lose identity, and as an army that used to have its own book, lose independence, as it was unceremoniously dumped into the orc soup book 
much like Beast Claw Raiders, who also once had their own book, were slopped into Ogre Maw tribes with Gutbusters. I'm still mad about that, but time marches on. Bone Splitters getting the axe was a long time coming, and for the last year or more, me and other content creators were essentially telling people straight up, don't buy this. They have no future here. In fairness, one, prehistoric orcs is a boring, bad idea with ugly models. And two, literally no one played them ever, and I mean no one. Didn't even appear on the worldwide tournament statistics sometimes. Such was the no one that played them. Yesterday, Twitter and my Discord exploded with rightfully angry people showing off their soon-to-be paper-weighted armies. I literally haven't seen one Bone Splitters. After saying all that, it's still bullshit. This is 4th edition. It's too late to do things like this. What are you doing? Transition from one game to another, fine. From 1st to 2nd edition, maybe. Going on 10 years in, you gotta support what you've decided to keep. If it's not selling because it's a stupid bad idea with ugly models, hey, figure it out. Now you've learned that doing nothing doesn't work, I guess. While Bone Splitters were not a surprise, Beasts of Chaos, to me, were. They got a terrain feature, endless spells, a re-sculpted foot hero no one asked for, and they kept their own army book till the end. You could say they did everything they could, except the thing everyone wanted, and would have worked. Refresh the model line with updated AOSified versions of the core idea. Order of importance would be troops first, obviously, such as the Minotaurs that Slaves to Darkness got. Then monsters and or a centerpiece, such as the Centaur God that Destruction got. And finally, least importantly by far, random foot heroes, one of which they did get. What wouldn't matter is squads of literal who units for a side game, which they got a few of instead. Great. Yep, refresh model line with new AOS theme and style. That sounds expensive, though. So just cut your losses and dump them into the old world, I guess. The AOS exclusive stuff they did get acted as essentially a trick. You tricked them. A rug pull. Terrain feature endless spells, their own book instead of souping some random-ass GW intern at LVO assuring people the army would stick around. All did a great job fooling customers over the last few years into thinking it was safe to buy expensive models and spend months painting them, confident in the knowledge that this army was one of the supported ones with a future. Thanks for your money. Eat shit. Play Old World. Or just... Quit Games Workshop products altogether, an option which I could not blame BOC players for choosing. In fact, now we have learned some things. Who is safe? Well, if you're an old Warhammer fantasy model containment army, you are not safe, ever. No matter how long the game has gone on. If you get AOS specific stuff like terrain, endless spells, maybe an updated hero, warbands, you are still not safe. If you are a brand new AOS faction that is also the main poster boy army with models you just bought in a starter set last edition, you are somehow still not safe. What am I supposed to do as a content creator who wants to promote this game that I like and get people into it with this information? 1.4 million people have watched my three Every Army and Age of Sigmar videos, each one in turn features armies that no longer exist by the time I make the next one, their money and time wasted, having been tricked by you. You have made me partially responsible for this, and that puts me in a position that I do not appreciate. Are Ogres next? My only army that I own 5,000 odd points for, and have played since I started the game? It's all fantasy models after all, lots of fine cast, and they got souped up into one book, Am I waiting for one big coin flip? A refresh for the whole line or shit canned into a different game which I have no interest in playing? I guess I'll wait. Well, that's enough theatrics. Let's get real. What are you going to do about it? Bone splitters players, I have no advice for you because you don't exist. Any on that army long since got the hint and did what they felt like doing. Beast of Chaos players, quit or get a new army. 
since that's the position GW has left you with. Whatever you do is up to you, and I don't blame you one way or the other. Stormcast players, use your guys as counts as for whatever equivalent units are still legal or that come out next wave. They're all on the same bases, and they all look the same anyway, no one will care. Stormcast was egregiously bloated, you know it, I know it, everybody knows it. Perhaps now they can exercise even a modicum of restraint when it comes to poster boy factions. Lamau, maybe focus on the other 25 armies, or should I say 23. If you want to raise a stink and try a boycott, grow up, spend your money elsewhere, I don't want to hear about it. Material possessions come and go. You conceivably got years of play out of them, and if you literally just three days ago bought into Bone Splitters, congratulations, you're the reverse unicorn. Be a smart shopper. This news post was letting the community know that in one year's time, those armies will be going away. They're letting you know this early. In fantasy, units simply appeared and disappeared like phantom particles in empty space. Give it one last hurrah. Kind of puts a sour note on all these 4th edition updates because it really does look good. Anyway, thanks for watching. I stream tonight. Buy a shirt, will ya?